How do you say that? 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 Hello, we have reached episode two of How Do You Say That? I'm Samantha Boffin and I'm in London. And I'm Mark Rise in Oxfordshire. And the idea of this podcast is that we'll be having a play around with some real scripts just to see how differently they could be done. Indeed. I wonder what we've got in store for us today. Here's a fun fact about Sam for you. If you ever meet her in a bar at a conference, and Mm -hmm. it's likely, I think, her favourite cocktail (laughs) is a margarita. Yes, thank you for that, Mark. And here's something you may not know about Mark. He worked for British Forces TV for nearly 20 years. I did indeed. Very famous amongst the sheep in the Falkland Islands, me. Let's not go any further with that one. I was a newsreader, that's fair. Um, (laughs) Let's introduce our guest for today's show, shall we? It's Claire Reeves. Hi, Claire. How are you? Hello, Mark and Sam. I'm really well, thank you. (laughs) <laughs> Hello, Claire. Hiya. Well, now, a little bit of info about Claire. Claire was a media-obsessed kid, and she began working in BBC Radio as a presenter and a sound engineer. And then she founded her voiceover business 12 years ago. She has an enviable client list, including Coca-Cola, Booking.com, Instagram, Clear Blue, National Geographic, Ooh. and many more as well. Lucky thing. Um, it's a talented thing, really. <laughs> uh, she's obsessed by branding as well and believes that understanding your brand essence or secret source, as it's known sometimes, is an important tool in unlocking authentic voiceover performances. So do you have a fun fact about yourself, Claire, for us? Oh, I've got so many. Do you want something that's travel related or media related? Oh, I don't mind. I did travel related. Let's go travel related. Travel related. Okay. Um, I've been to 15 African countries. Wow. What was your favourite? Oh, my favourite. Well, it depends what you want. Um, I do love a bit of Namibia. The the red dunes of Namibia. Oh, was that it? Oh, really, really superb. They're massive. And they're a really incredible, rich orange colour, which against the big blue sky, uh, it's quite special, really. How do you say that? Right. Well, let's crack on with our first script of the show and ask, how do you say say that? that? (laughs) It's a little echo. There's an echo in here. Well, this is something that I have been working on this week. I do a lot of short stories. They're sort of, they're usually about an hour long and they're usually quite comedic. And I've done quite a few of them now. And and I have quite a few more to do. So is that like audio books then? Well, it's kind of like audio books. I mean, yes, it is like audio books because the each story, there's usually four stories in one book. The whole thought of it fills me with fear. Ooh, uh, how, about you, how about you, Claire? Yeah. Um, <laughs> all the clients of all the jobs <laughs> in all my career. <laughs> do you know the thing I haven't done is audiobooks. And and do you, is that because you don't want to do audiobooks? Or? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, wow. And you're the same. <laughs> me too. I'm the same, but mainly because it doesn't pay that well. Oh, Mark. I know, but it does come down to that in the end. Mm. I suppose so. Per finished hour, if you're putting eight hours or seven hours work into a per finished hour, that strikes me as not a lot of money for a lot of work. But I do see that um, lovely esteemed colleagues and incredible people who do these things, I've got the utmost respect for, are booked up well in advance, um, which my life isn't like that. Yeah, and it's obviously a labour of love for them. Yeah, it, well, I, I'm not sure that it always is, actually. <laughs> Talking to some people that do audiobooks. Interesting. So, and then, then that's the trouble is, is you don't always get something that you're absolutely in love with. Sometimes it is just, you know, something that you've got to kind of get through. I mean, you, you can kid yourself while you're doing it that you love it, I think. And that that's part of the trick. It's a bit like mm-hmm. being on a fairground ride uh, where, when <laughs> that you're absolutely hating. If you pretend you love it, if you pretend you're going to the moon and back. Sam, it goes on a lot longer than a terrible ride. It's true. It's it, true. Does. it does go on a lot longer than a fairground ride. <laughs> it depends ride, whether you but... get off it and puke straight afterwards or not. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I mean, I don't know. I, I must admit that I resisted audiobooks for a long time. And then I, as you say, Claire, I was I was pulled into them because what they are is they're they're sort of reliable. What you get is a big chunk of mm. work, and and it's it's a chunk of work that you can get up with and think, oh, I've got this to do today, you know. So you feel quite productive. And I've I've have learned to love them, um, but I particularly like these because they're short. They're only an hour long, so mm-hmm. each individual story doesn't feel like 
you know, such a mountain to climb. Sam, Claire, I, I, I don't want anyone to think that I don't like long form work. I love long form work. Yeah. Because e-learning is long form, but it yeah. pays quite well. Yeah, same. I'm like that. <laughs> I like e-learning. Guys, 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 come on. What about the love of these things? <laughs> what about the love? The love. I feel the love. What I do you know, think I've out got... there in podcast land? <laughs> Let us know, podcast at britishvoiceover.co.uk, if, uh, if you've got strong views on doing audiobooks or not. So we've got this audiobook, this little audiobook uh, script, so only a tiny, tiny um, fraction of it. Mm-hmm. So I think I'm going to get you, uh, Mark, oh. to do it first, okay. to tackle it first. Okay. All right, well, I'll give it a go. Here we go. In 50 yards, you will have reached your destination, advised the satnav, the most valuable tool in her armoury. She began to peer at street numbers, counting them down on the gates and walls. Slightly to her surprise, number 43A was quite different from the rest. In fact, it wasn't a house at all. It was an old church sitting at the very end of the terrace. As she pulled into the nearest parking bay, it struck her that someone had certainly put a lot of work into its upkeep. She was curious to meet her new client, a Mrs Pendrith. (laughs) I think that's actually quite well written as well. I I read books to my mum, who has dementia, um, and some of the books that we read really are very difficult to read because they've Mm -hmm. not been abridged or anything like that. But that felt like it was written for speech almost. Yeah, definitely. And there's a nice amount of punctuation, so breathing is possible. Uh Um, Also, when there's punctuation, I'm kind of, I'm a bit fanatical about using musical um, analogies for things as well. Um, You can see the phrases and the musical phrases. Mm. Um, So it's clues to how to bring it to life, really, Mm -hmm. isn't it? And the more of those I find in a script, the happier I am, to be fair. Well, it's also, it is interesting what you say, because the writer is musical. He's he's, uh, into music as well. So that's really interesting. Uh Uh, Yeah. And in fact, his his, uh, daughter is a singer. So okay. yeah, maybe maybe there is something in that. Maybe yeah. that's why he's an easy he's an easy uh, writer to read. Oh, I, could I, be. I have to say. Could be. I I, I loved that, uh, Mark. I Thank loved you. that. How did you feel about it though? I f- no, I felt it was really well written, and I thought and I thought it was easy to read. I I, I felt like I was in the narrator character quite easily. Okay. For that one. So Claire, oh, that's quite, I'm almost you... excited. <laughs> that's you? good. That's very good. nearly. I'm going to be able to get you two to do audio books. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, let's see what happens then, shall we? Hmm. In fifty yards, you will have reached your destination. Advised the sat nav, the most valuable tool in her armory. She began to peer at street numbers, counting them down on the gates and walls. Slightly to her surprise, number 43A was quite different from the rest. In fact, it wasn't a house at all. It was an old church sitting at the very end of the terrace. As she poured into the nearest parking bay, it struck her that someone had certainly put a lot of work into its upkeep. She was curious to meet her new client, a Mrs Pendrith. Very good. What do you, how did you feel doing that, saying that out loud? Oh, it's all right. I think, you know, had it been any longer, I'd have been a bit, oh, but because I can see the end. Is that terrible? I could see the end. I, that is awful thing to say, actually, when someone's taken the time and trouble to write something beautiful. Yeah. Doing audiobooks is such a different thing for me, even though I'm very used to telling stories. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and this almost feels, I suppose, of the genres I've worked in, this almost feels closest to documentary narration. A little bit, yes, but I got that in your voice, actually. That's a really interesting thing that you said there, because I thought that your narrator was more excited than mine, like you were finding out at the same time what was going on down that terrace. I always think that with audiobooks, I may I may be wrong on this actually, but less is more in some ways because, it, and it is a very different it's a very different way of of approaching a script. I think because mm-hmm. with almost all other scripts, we try and make every word count, don't we? Yeah, um, yeah. And I think with audiobooks, you're not actually making every word count in the same way. You don't have to push it through like we do with almost fair, every other fair. genre. You just have to let it be. Hmm. So where's the line between 
telling the story and bringing it to life. Yeah, that's that's the tricky and bit, isn't it? Over-egging the <laughs> over-egging the story. <laughs> is that a thing? No, you're absolutely right, Claire. Because that that is something that you have to kind of you hope you're going to have mm. to feel your way through. And certainly, whenever I do an audio book or a story like this, I always do the first you know, few minutes of it, you know, the first sort of three to five minutes of it and send it off and say, have, yeah. I, have I got it right? Is this what you were wanting? Mm-hmm. Um, because if you get it wrong... <laughs> oh, God, and, don't. And you, you do yeah. eight hours of getting it wrong. That's the fear, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> and that's to right me there. sounds like that to me sounds like the best advice for any long form project. Yes, check with your client. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And interestingly, with that kind of the the, I mean, it's it's not exactly what you were saying there, but it kind of it crossed my mind. Um, with documentary narration being relatively long form in the form mm-hmm. in the ones I've done, yeah, um, we do the beginning, we do it all in order, and then we come back and we do the beginning again. Mm. That's um, very common. Because you've eased with into having, it. Because you're really into it you. and you really, really get the journey by that stage. Even yep. if you have had chance to read through it, which you don't always yeah. um, beforehand, then you can go back and do the top with an understanding of, hey, everyone, this is the journey we're going on. Mm. And it does bring a whole other feel to it as well. Yeah, yeah I often do that as a director. I often mm-hmm. you know, let it go. People warm up. And then you you kind of wheel back round at the end and and redo yeah. the top again. It's it's so interesting. And and then you kind of start thinking, well, I wonder how much those experiences and what we freely consume in the way of stories actually informs our performances as well. Yeah, that is very true. Well, mind you, it can put you off because of course you hear these amazing audio book narrators. Yeah, that is very I'm true. Sort of thinking, true. Oh well, I think I'll just hang up my microphone <laughs> and go home then. But uh, you know, don't no, do no, that. Don't do that. <laughs> Talking. Of your microphone, though, I want yes. to hear how you oh, how would do I did this. It. Okay, if that's right. all right. Yeah, let's have a little. I'll just take a little sip. In fifty yards, you will have reached your destination. Advised the satnav, the most valuable tool in her armory. She began to peer at street numbers, counting them down on the gates and walls. Slightly to her surprise, number forty-three A was quite different from the rest. In fact, it wasn't a house at all. It was an old church sitting at the end of the terrace. As she pulled into the nearest parking bay, it struck her that someone had certainly put a lot of work into its upkeep. She was curious to meet her new client, a Mrs Pendrith. I love that. I was right there with you. Mm -hmm. Mm. It's so different. It's really interesting. I think we've shown three very different ways there. Yeah. Yeah. Much quicker, Sam. Yes, absolutely much quicker. Not so ponderous. I, w- I was no. quite ponderous, I think. Same, same. Well, um, yeah, I go. I, I, I always feel as though I'm going slowly, but I actually, I'm told I go quite a clip. I'm, told. <laughs> yeah, I'm very rarely told I'm going too slowly. <laughs> I think I'm enjoying my words too much. But, um, but yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I mean, it's much more the pace of reading the book. I suppose it yes, is. Absolutely. Um, yeah, very much so. And I suppose it's, it's also quite difficult perhaps to do a tiny little excerpt like this because of course you're absolutely right Claire in what you're saying in that you as you're reading it you get into it you you kind of if you like you sink into the book and you mm-hmm. become the book if you like it's a bit poncy to say that but do you know what I mean I, you, I, you, I become it become the book I, I, I was absolutely with you there Sam as you became <laughs> I the became book. the book no, but it's actually quite difficult to do a tiny bit I suppose yes, I bet, in I that bet, instance yeah. so uh, yeah mm-hmm. it is worthwhile remembering that these are real scripts that we're working on but we've changed names and some details to avoid copyright issues so it's worthwhile pointing that out Claire, you have bought a lovely script for us that you've been working on. Can you tell us a bit about it? It's it's more in my comfort zone, to be honest. It's more of a sort of promo-y commercial yep. for, for, a thing. Um, <laughs> for a thing. Is this for what you thing? do more of, generally? I'm probably 50-50 commercial corporate. Right, yeah. Um, and when I say corporate, I, may, I mean e-learning... Yeah. Explainer, the, the whole round yeah. plethora that is corporate. All of yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I do do quite a lot of commercial work as well. Um, and I think because most of my voiceover training is in the commercial area, and just and they look, they're short, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's, there might be a telly element, 
which don't we all love? Yeah. Um, and I'm kind of fascinated by the mini piece, mini masterpieces that is a commercial, mm. whether that's a 20 second radio commercial or, you know, some kind of 30 second to one minute epic TV thing. But you're not saying um, every commercial is well written, are you? No, I'm that not. That definitely I'm, isn't true. That is, that is true. Um, you know, but when you get a real gem and there's something clever, I suppose it's because I'm a bit brand obsessed, ultimately. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Um, How are they getting their message across and appealing to people? And and with commercials, how am I going to get in that person's head to get them to do what this person wants them to do? All of that stuff, it's not just about the kind of saying the words. Mm. There's the kind of what do we need to get them to do and how do we get them to do it? Well, the element I find really, really fascinating. Mm. So the because I did obviously I I wrote and directed and performed uh, uh, TV ads and promos mm. for a long time. I mean, long I, time, I yeah. must have literally done thousands of them. Yeah. And the biggest thing that I found that was the problem was getting people out of that kind of ad speak promo yes. speak what they think they should be, yeah. how they think they 100%. should be sounding. And and so you write these kind of addy scripts. But you don't want them read in an addy in way. In an addy way. 100% yeah. agree. And yep. I think that's that's one of the biggest hurdles, actually. Do you so, think that's where most people go wrong, Sam? I do. And I think that mainly because it's changed quite um, quite a lot over the last... It has la- been quite the, dramatic, that change. Yeah. 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 And it, yeah. it really has changed the way that that voice is used. And, and quite honestly, there are lots and lots of ads and promos out there they don't have a voice at all now which i think says a lot actually <laughs> they they you know they do a lot of different things they bring a lot of different things into play so your voice is there to well it's it's there to support everything and then there's this lift at the end when you're doing the sell part but it's a tiny lift should we give it a crack yes I suggest that Sam does it first. Oh, I'm so pleased. Okay, right. Yes, I'll do it first. Okay, so remembering everything that we've just said. Okay. Remember when live music just got put on pause? And then in 2022, it came back in style. You swapped movie nights for mosh pits, cancelled plans for wristbands, live streams for main stage screams in the Netherlands, Hungary, Brazil, UK, Sweden and beyond. You made a lot of swaps. All nine million of you. We've swapped tickets. We've swapped tastes and stories with your favourite artists. 2022. The year live music made its comeback. 2023. The year you... Don't miss a second of it. We'll get you in, even if it's sold out. Was that lower key than when you had originally read it through and thought you were going to do it? As in, in, in well, apropos no, our discussion actually. just a minute ago. And no, <laughs> <laughs> because, um, because I worry that if I went, remember when live music just got put on pause and then in 2022 it came back in style? Yeah. If I did it like that, I worry that almost everyone would go, what the? <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Calm down. I'm yeah. rapidly <laughs> thinking the way I'm going to do this now. <laughs> but, it, but, 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 but it's possibly because I may not be the demographic for that. So if I start coming in all jazz hands... Am I just, is it going to be wrong for me? Mm -hmm. But Mark, how would you do Mm. it? Um, Well, taking on board everything that's been said, I'm going to give you probably what I would do as the third read of an audition. Cool. Okay, very specific. Well, the the slightly more out there one, maybe. Okay. Mm. And I'm going to try and go a tiny bit estuary. Anyway, let me give it a try. Remember when live music just got put on pause? And then in 2022, it came back in style. You swap movie nights for mosh pits, cancel plans for wristbands, live streams for main stage screams. In the Netherlands, Hungary, Brazil, UK, Sweden and beyond, you made a lot of swaps. All nine million of you. We've swapped tickets. We've swapped tastes and stories with your favourite artists. 2022, the year live music made its comeback. 2023... The year you don't miss a second of it. We'll get you in, even if it's sold out. Nice. Yeah. Do you see what I mean by that would be my third (laughs) read? Yeah, yeah. Unless you're saying that should definitely be my first. (laughs) 
<laughs> no, I think I think I think you're absolutely right. It's a good, it's a good it, that's a good kind of um, yeah. Let's have some fun with it. Read. Yeah. So Claire, how is it really done? Okay. Let yeah. Me <laughs> t- t- tell us. <laughs> let me. Th- so I gave him a couple of different versions of this. As I said, um, the sample they chose of me was for quite something very different. So, mm. so this is kind of this is roughly um, where we got to, and the one that they went, yeah, that's it. Um, okay. Here we go. Remember when live music just got put on pause and then in 2022 it came back in style? You swap movie nights for mosh pits, cancel plans for wristbands, live streams for main stage screams in the Netherlands, Hungary, Brazil, UK, Sweden and beyond. You made a lot of swaps, all nine million of you. We've swapped tickets, we've swapped tastes and stories with your favourite artists. 2022, the year live music made its comeback. 2023, the year you don't miss a second of it. We'll get you in. We'll get you in. Even if it's sold out. Ooh, now that's, nice. that was interesting. Well done. Yeah. That was and, hard, and harder at the end. I mean, it's a very definite tagline, that, yeah. isn't it, at the end. Interestingly, on the script, it is in bold. Yeah. Did they send it to you in bold? They did. Okay, well, that's helpful of them then, to, yeah. to be fair, isn't it? Yeah. I love that. They were, that was really smiley, though, Sam, wasn't it? Really smiley, because your pace yeah. wasn't a world away from where I was, no, I don't think. No, true. But your, your, your voice, it was very different, very different to mine. Don't think um, we could sound more different, Sam. It's funny, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> oh, I don't know. You've got quite a low voice as well. I don't think I have. Point. No, I don't think Claire has either, particularly. Uh, okay, all right. Wow. Uh, I'd love but... a bit of the low tones. They don't come out in my voice at all. I mean, this is a social media thing that needed to kind of, as we said, fit in yep. with what yep, people yep, yep. are watching and who people mm-hmm. are. But so I was really conscious of that. And they wanted, it's interesting, they wanted a quite, they wanted an element of a sweetness about it. Yes. Which yeah, when yeah. I originally did it, I was kind of thinking, no, nah, no, nah, one of my, you know, one of my, takes was a lot harder than that kind of my yeah. my pop voice I suppose remember yeah. when live music just got uh-huh. put on pause and then in 2022 it came back in style you know they didn't which want is that what I did kind of originally thought of yeah. and I suspect that my first or second audition for something like that would have been that yeah yeah but yeah. you sort of expect us mm-hmm. to do that which is yeah. where I found you know and why I wanted to share this script with you actually because because of the other stance they took and you know and since reading a little bit about understanding advertising within within social media platforms and having it fit rather than stand out was quite <laughs> was interesting and useful yeah. actually for yeah you know how i approach these things in the future <laughs> lots lots learned how do you say that We know there are hundreds of different ways that a script can be read. We've just made that very clear. So let's test that theory out with a little wild card improvisation of our own. Oh, God. So, so Claire, can you suggest a way that Mark might read one of those scripts? Yes. Yes, I can. (laughs) And and which script? That's the question. We're going for Sam's audiobook script. (laughs) And you're going to perform it to me. Yes. In the medium of an explainer. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that. Oh, that is tough because it's written absolutely not that way. All right, I'll give it. What well, do you think? I'm here to make life easy for no, you. No, no, no. Well, I was hoping so, but obviously. <laughs> 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 who, who booked her, Sam? Who, who booked Claire? It's like, whose idea was that? It's like, who got that? That's an idea. Right. Okay. I'll I'll go into standard 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 British explainer. It's a button you press. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. In 50 yards, you will have reached your destination, advised the satnav, the most valuable tool in her armoury. She began to peer at street numbers, counting them down on the gates and walls. Slightly to her surprise, number 43 was quite different from the rest. In fact, it wasn't a house at all, it was an old church sitting at the very end of the terrace. As she pulled into the nearest parking bay, it struck her that someone had certainly put a lot of work into its upkeep. She was curious to meet her new client, a Mrs. Pendrith. Nice. <laughs> did and did I click into click the mode on, correctly? Click on the up <laughs> arrow off. if you want to see Mrs. Pendrith. Absolutely. Yes, totally that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> this is Mrs. Pendrith. She lives at number 43A, but her house was quite different from the rest. Absolutely. <laughs> 
So, Claire, I, I would, I, my, I get the treat of asking you to. I'm going to get you to read your own script. Okay. But oh, that's hard I would ways. like this read like a big drama thriller. Oh. A thriller, though. Okay. Remember when live music just got put on pause. And then in 2022, it came back in style. You've swapped movie nights for mosh pits, cancelled plans for wristbands, live streams for main stage screams. In the Netherlands, Hungary, Brazil, UK, Sweden and beyond. You made a lot of swaps, all nine million of you. We've swapped tickets, we've swapped tastes and stories with your favourite artists. 2022, the year live music made its comeback. 2023, the year you don't miss a second of it. We'll get you in, even if it's sold out. (laughs) <laughs> that, that was certainly dramatic. <laughs> oh dear, I think I need to take my cardigan off now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word, that was great in in a whole bunch of different ways. It doesn't quite fit with the script, does it? No. But it, it's it... doing doing something completely different with the script can sometimes get you out if you're in a loop. You know, sometimes totally. you, you're kind yeah. of reading yeah. and reading and thinking, "I'm not going yeah. anywhere with this. I I can't find another way in." Yeah, reading it totally off. <laughs> How do you you say say that? that? We also really want to hear your take on this week's script. So we have put them in the show notes. And if you would like to have a bash at one of them and send it to us on an MP3, that would be great. We can pick up one or two and we'll play them in an upcoming episode. Good point. And if you remember, last week we were trying out Liz Drury's corporate script. In the beginning, there was chaos, if you remember. And we've had a lovely read-in from Kerry Hutchinson, who's gone on to do a wild card Mickey Spillane take on the script. (laughs) Have a listen to this. In the beginning, there was chaos. And now, hmm, still chaos. If only you could maximise the potential of your warehouse space, you'd benefit from increased throughput overcome labor shortages, and fulfill orders faster. ka But how do you transform chaos into order? You don't, because at Acme, we do it for you. Streamline your operations and future-proof your warehouse with Acme. Get in touch to find out more. Oh, thank you so much, Gary. (laughs) That was so good. So, oh, and he also says, it's always a pleasure to listen to you both. Well, that's nice of him to say. (laughs) Because sometimes scripts are very vexing. Oh, vexing. Are very vexing in a way, simply because there are no hard or fast, apart from working out the reading style of announcer, spokesperson or real person. That is true, actually. True, yeah, Um, yeah, In terms of cadence, emphasis and what they're hero is for intonation yeah that's no, he's, a great he's point. absolutely right yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. that's pretty much why we're doing this podcast to be fair and if yeah. you'd like to send us your read from one of the scripts in this week's episode whack it onto an mp3 and send it over to podcast at britishvoiceover.co.uk fantastic and we would also like your big voiceover questions what is it about the job or the marketing or the actual read or the audition process whatever it is what is bothering you Now, our question this week, and I'd love to hear Claire's take on this, is how long does it take before you get used to hearing yourself on playback? Oh, so like when when people say, oh, I hate hearing my own voice on tape. Yeah, got you. Okay. So Claire, Mm. any any ideas how long it takes you? Gosh, do you know, the thing is, personal experience dictates that I've actually been recording myself since I could press record on an Mm -hmm. old tape machine back in the day. So I used to force myself when I was in learning to be a radio presenter many, many hundreds of years ago. I used to have to listen to my own shows. I would grab that tape and I would listen and work out what worked and what didn't, what was good and what wasn't and why, blah, blah, blah. So Mm -hmm. I've been kind of listening to myself. But I... The thing is with voiceover, I will shut up in a minute. Um, The thing is with voiceover is that you are your own commodity. Yes. So you have to be, you have, you're like listening in externally, if you see what I mean. It's almost like it's not my voice. Yeah. Totally. Do you know what I mean? So I'm self directing and critical, and this stuff that I'm saying, I'm my harshest critic in many ways. Um, You know, and some days I really love how I sound, and other days I'm going to. 
flipping awful. And you know, <laughs> you know if something's off. You know immediately oh, if something's heavens, off. That straight other away. people just wouldn't notice. I, I think that's fascinating from from my point of view. In into the, the same radio background, of course. Mm. But I've heard experts say the reason that people don't like hearing their own voice on tape is because when you um, speak out loud, you are hearing the reverberation in your yes. own. Um, body but mm. also you're hearing the sound as it bounces off walls whereas with headphones you yeah. are hearing it directly into your ears with no bouncing off yes right. so it does actually sound different it but is. we know that's that's the way we actually sound so you get yeah. uh, the question was how long i reckon it takes probably two years to get used to it and seven years to really love it yeah yeah or love working with it maybe Yep. I was going to and say. And understand maybe how yes, to work with it. Yes, understand how to work with it. Yes. <laughs> I think that's more to it. I don't think I could ever honestly say, oh, I love my voice. I love how I sound. Um, we uh, love your voice, Sarah. Oh, thank you very much. Should, I absolutely don't love it at all. I mean, I, I just kind of, you know, I roll my eyes at it at times, as does everyone else in my family. If it if it pops up unexpectedly, they all go, oh, mom, it's your voiceover voice, which is really annoying. Because um, I think I haven't got one. What are you talking about? So, yeah, I know. I know what you mean. You, I, I kind of, I'm not that. I'm critical about it if I'm having to be critical. If in, in mm-hmm. that, if I'm, if I'm having to get something together and send it off. But after I've sent it off, I never think about it again. I also have moments where I go, do you know what? Sounded really good there. That was a great <laughs> audition. I'm really pleased with that. Yeah. I'll definitely get goes. that job. I'll definitely get that <laughs> definitely job. Definitely get that one. <laughs> Hello, crickets. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, and go. Actually, I did that all right. And I think that. I think it's really important that you are, as well as your own harshest critic, you are your own real supporter and champ yes, in this absolutely. business. You've yes, got to absolutely. be, right? Absolutely. So I think that's probably uh, coming towards the end of episode two. Thank you so much, Claire, for uh, thank for you for having us. me. It's been yeah, lovely. Thanks, oh, you've been a been a wonder, a wonder to Indeed us. Indeed, you have. And all your details, of course, can be found in the show notes. Very important. Yes, we'll also be putting today's scripts in the show notes as well, so that you can have a read yourself in whatever genre you want. Uh, please have a go. Send it into podcast at britishvoiceover.co.uk. We'd love to hear what you do with them. And of course. It's the same email address for your voiceover questions too. Please like and subscribe to the podcast. Tell your VO mates, reshare our Facebook posts about it, that kind of thing, you know. And right now, let's see how this end bit goes because we absolutely didn't do it properly last week. <laughs> Mark tried. and I, yes, <laughs> Mark and I will be back next week with more scripts and another voiceover guest when we'll be asking, How do, how you, do you say that? that? It's like Tony Hancock, isn't it? <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> how do you say that? 